Plenty of concern about energy prices in the past couple of days and a stark warning today as well on top of the increased prices. Will we run out of gas this winter? AMO says that's a genuine possibility in particular on high peak days. Joining me live is Tony Wood, Energy and Climate Change Program Director at the Grattan Institute. Tony, thanks for your time as always. So these headlines today and what's behind it. Um, what's happening here? It, it sounds dire. Will a shortage actually happen or is this going to end up the government leaning on exporters to, to fix this as we've seen in a short term basis in the past? Well, what's happening, Tom, is um, two things, or two or three things, actually. One is that the traditional source of gas, the main source of gas into southeast Australia, uh, off, coast, off the coast of Victoria, um, has been there for 30, 40 years, is gradually depleting, and that's not going to stop. So the reduction in supply from there is happening faster than the reduction in demand, which is some people are trying to get off gas because it is a fossil fuel and, as many of your viewers would know, it become very, very expensive. So what that does is put pressure on the balance. And what our email is saying, the Australian Energy Market Operator, in this report today, is that we have two emerging scenarios. One is that in the next five years, start from now to 2027, uh, four or five years, we could see uh, situations in winter where we have significant demand for gas for heating, particularly in the southeast of Victoria and so forth. Um, and we also may see a repeat of what we saw last year, where we also need gas for power generation, either because our older coal fired power stations are becoming less reliable, or because we see um, you know, more need for gas to balance wind and solar. All of those things together mean that we could see a situation where for short periods of time, in peak winter times, we see a shortfall. That's what they're worried about. Um, now, mm. it's not necessarily going to be the case because um, that's dependent on those forecasts. The longer term looks much more challenging. Yeah, so just briefly on the shorter term, though, we'd be in that situation where we, had, we were short on domestic gas, but we'd still be shipping a hell of a lot of it overseas. Is there another country in the world that has that, that has genuine warnings of gas shortages as they're exporting so much of it? Well, Australia's overall energy situation is rather unusual because we are blessed with huge amounts of resources, but we are traditionally a major trader as well. And keeping that in balance is not easy to do, particularly when you get these sort of tensions emerging, Tom. So what we're seeing now is a situation where um, we have long-term gas contracts that probably would, um, those gas fields in Queensland would never have been developed without that export market. Um, we have right. sufficient capacity beyond those long-term contracts to meet these short-term demands. Keeping that balance right and looking for potentially over the next five to ten years more gas um, is going to be a challenge. Whilst we also know in the long term we've got to get off gas because it's a fossil fuel. Now, that's a really interesting balance and I think um, what this report is showing that we do need to get some things in place to give governments, consumers, industrial and households more comfort that we're not going to see a shortfall of gas in that longer term. Yeah, so, and when you talk about that longer term as well, the big intervention from the government, of course, was the capping of the gas price for domestic use um, at, uh, I'm trying to remember now, $12, I think it was. So... $12, yeah. What, what mm -hmm. do we know, yeah, what, what do we know about whether or not that's crimping domestic supply? Because we've heard noises from the gas industry, um, but we hear noises from every industry. You know, they want to change hearts and minds and get yeah. sometimes get um, voters pressuring governments. Are there investments that you're surprised are not progressing yet? Is that happening as yet? Are we about to find out in the next few months whether they're going to carry on with the threats, if you like, carry through with them? Well, that's the interesting tension, because I think the $12 price cap, which was put in place for 12 months, and we're already three or four months into that 12, um, did have the impact it was supposed to have. It did bring down prices for both gas and electricity. And that's was partly reflected in the other numbers you referred to that were announced yesterday in terms of electricity price movements. Now, the second part of the package that the government's trying to negotiate with the producers is to ensure what happens after those 12 months. That's very unclear yet. Um, the government would like to make sure that we continue to see real pressure to make sure we don't have windfall profits and that that doesn't have, a, have an impact on Australian consumers. At the same time, the gas producers are saying, well, in the longer term, we've got to find a way in which we can have a balanced market. That tension has not been resolved. 
my understanding is there's now, even though there was maybe a couple of months ago, a lot of, a lot of real, almost acrimony between the government and the ACCC on the one side and the producers mm. on the other, that's improving. They are genuinely now trying to find a solution. We've not seen what that solution might be, um, but hopefully we can see something in the very short term because we are going to need some commitments to do gas uh, under any scenario okay. to meet the, um, the potential problems we've just been talking about. All right, so we'll know soon enough on that front. A couple of very quick questions on price. The last movement was up. We were told, hey, it's not up as much as it would have been. Is the next movement on price is actually going to be down? <laughs> if I knew that, Tom, I would be in there talking to you. <laughs> look, I mean, I think all you can say, all I can say is that mm. we look at the underlying issues here and one of the things that's contributed to the large increase we saw announced yesterday was the flow through of big costs that were incurred last year. Now, some of those things shouldn't and we'd like to see won't uh, reappear. And that should mean we'll see some amelioration of those price increases this time next year. Now, who knows what else okay. might happen between now and then? And that's why you've got to be a bit careful about those okay. sort of projections. Right. So if, no, if nothing else unexpected happens, then we could see them moving downwards. What about, I'm not sure if you're a betting man, but what odds would you give on Labor delivering on its net reduction of $275 of lower power bills by 2025, this pre-election promise that uh, the Coalition <laughs> likes to talk about? Um, uh, look, I wouldn't like to get into a debate with the government personally over this, but I wouldn't put any of my money on this. I'd rather go and spend money at the Melbourne Cup, I think.